Yeah. So I, I think with the Hawks, I, I wanted to focus on what I thought was the most important barometer of their progress between last season and this season. So my number is, is minus 4.0 and that's their net rating without Trey young on the floor per basketball reference. It was supposed to improve this season just with the additions that they made with Delon Wright, with Sharif Cooper coming in with a bunch of wings who could still handle the ball and provide that secondary creation that this team needs to thrive with Trey young still doing so much. And That hasn't been the case for reference last year's number without him on the court was minus 1.8. So this is trending in the wrong direction. And I I can't quite tell if I view that as a positive or a negative because the Hawks, much like so many other teams have struggled with continuity. They've had so many players entering the COVID-19 protocols. They've had a lot of injuries to deal with. Is this something that we can expect to regress positively to a more reasonable number that's at least comparable to last year's, or is this a red flag that this team is not constructed to go beyond where it got last season with an Eastern conference finals appearance. So you're viewing it as a positive in the sense that this tells them they're not at that level and they will proceed to act accordingly. If that is the case, I wonder how they act accordingly. Is it a consolidation trade? No, I'm genuinely, I'm genuinely waffling between it being a positive and a negative. And I think it's probably a little of both where the, the circumstances of this season have made it harder for them to work those new additions into the lineup. Again, referring to, to Wright and Sharif Cooper. I think the talent is still there where this weakness could be addressed. It just hasn't happened yet. And the Hawks have been mediocre as a result. So I'm, I'm very much on the fence. I could, I could be swayed either way because I think it's, it's indicative of the struggles, but not necessarily telling about the future. I get that. I'd be curious to see what that number was before they suffered their beatdown by the Knicks, uh, which he did not play in. So I'm sure those numbers might actually be skewed even further towards the negative, but they have not made, they've been one of the most disappointing NBA teams this season. And I think there's, you could pinpoint a number of things. Clint Capella started slow their defense has been God awful for, for most of the season. Uh, they've been awful in the fourth quarter as well. And I do think even the fourth quarter sort of telltale of them having those bench heavy units out there to start, there needs to be a way to figure those things out. And I think I tend to lean towards, they need a consolidation trade. I don't know if they'll act that way. And it's so tough with Cam Reddish. He's in and out of the rumor mill, but it's at this point, he's consistently healthier than Deandre Hunter. And he's not a throwaway asset. He has a year left on his rookie scale. And the night that we're recording this, he went kaboom um, in the first half of, of Atlanta's game. So it's, it's just tough to read what this team could do. But I think that they either need a trade that's going to help them with those non tray minutes or like to just boost them as a defensive team somehow. They have a lot of talent up and down. And I think even with the injuries, even with the league's health and safety protocols, they've clearly been one of the two or three biggest disappointments in the NBA thus far. Yeah. I'm curious who you would have as a bigger disappointment. Cause for me, I think Atlanta is probably number one and I still don't have too much long, long long-term concern. I'm not sure I would make that consolidation trade that you referenced quite yet, just because I do still believe in the pieces and the construction we saw work last year. This might just be a regular season filled with a little bit more experimentation, a little bit more reversion to the the mid-range heavy, less ball movement offense that we've typically seen under Nate McMillan. But the personnel shouldn't be regressing and the fits still make sense. So maybe it's just foolish of me, but I, I'm, I'm holding on to hope here. 